if no one's talking and we suddenly burp and we feel the burp coming? Can we press no, the cough just, button? No, just like kind of raise your hand like that and then burp and then do but <laughs> do your best. This is Unposit, a podcast by a family of geeks. <laughs> I'm Lady Disdain, and I'm 43 years old. I am the sauce underscore, and I am 11 teen. <laughs> underscore the data bytes. 41. <laughs> I'm Furious Girl, and I am 9. Hola, amigos. Welcome to another podcast starting with me. I am the sauce. I am 11 teen. I will rule the world and maybe destroy, Jim- and maybe destroy Jupiter. On to mom. <laughs> well, I'm Lady Disdain with oh, a Y. Why I, do we need to do this? Because it's fun. Because he, he did it and we're doing it. It's okay, and he's driving. Uh, and I'm 43. I'm the oldest person in the room. I don't always act like it. And Maybe mine is the cat. The go cat to the person to my right, who are you? I am Furious Girl with the zero and seven of an O, and I am 97. Uh, mine is the seven. She's nine. No, I'm not. 97. Okay, who's after you? That person. Uh, underscore the data bytes. What are we talking about today, Sauce? We are talking about Drax turns. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that was on a prior oh, podcast. That's, that's the one after next. <laughs> okay, we are uh, talking about Captain America Civil War. Yeah. Oh, and I'd like to point out that Mom doesn't act like the oldest one in the room. Dad does, even though he's not. And I it's know not, it's not, it's not Somebody nice. has to be the grown up here. Oh, what? I want to be the grown up. Ooh, yeah, please, please. then settle down, <laughs> sit still, and, and I'm serious about that. You about knocked over that speaker again. All right, what's going on? Well, you said civil war. Are we talking about civil war? Maybe. Yes. Yeah, starting. From 1860 to 1865, the American Civil War, or which civil war? Okay, I'm gonna okay. pretend you didn't say that. Okay, we are doing movie specs first. I was going to say, this came out in 2016, May. Uh-oh. He wants to lay on somebody's... So, the cat, is, <laughs> the cat likes, for whatever reason, <laughs> to lay on paper. And Only a part of paper that we, that we always use. Like we actually wanted him at one point to pick whether he thought Loki or Winter Soldier was the worst enemy or something, and he never did. That's the only thing he never does. That's the it. only paper he never laid on when we were water. Anyway, commence. Don't fight that out. Let's... Well, I said that. We're talking about Captain America Civil War, starring uh-huh. everybody. I uh-huh. hope. Directed by the Russo brothers. Uh-huh. Came out in the 5th of May, 2016. So, we have Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., Scarlett Johansson, Sebastian Stan, Anthony Mackie, Don Chief, Jeremy Renner, Chadwick Boseman as introducing as the Black Panther. Nice. Paul Bettany as Vision. Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Rudd, Emily Van Camp Jeez. as Sharon Carter, Tom Holland as Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Frank Grillo as Brock Rumlow, Crossroads, Daniel Bruhl, who's really good, as Zemo, mm-hmm. we have Martin Freeman as Everett Ross, Wow. Everett oh, wow. K. Ross, that's a weird little thing, Alfre Woodard has a small part in this, Marissa Tomei, William Hurt, mm-hmm. coming back as Thaddeus Ross, I think there's no relation. No to relation there. Um, I that's it for all of the big names. That's but a that lot was a lot of people. <laughs> that's what we are talking about today. And that's why we start with this because now we have a reference of who is in this. Everybody, Jeremy Renner, I think steals his lines, steals his scenes very well. Whoever he is, Ant Man, Hawkeye, Hawkeye. Oh, yeah. Hawkeye. All the characters really don't get overshadowed by any other character. It was very well done, a masterful ensemble performance and direction and writing. Okay, next is superpowers. Mm-hmm. First, me. Uh, I wrote too many characters, uh, so uh, <laughs> on to Georgia. Everything! Okay, True. what? Well, Everything. Fair, fair enough, but what? <laughs> Let me ask you kids a question, interview style. No. What were the two main special superpowers that we saw for the first time in this movie? Um, um. Oh, 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 oh. Um. So, are, is this superpowers or super suits and everything? Yeah. Included. Okay, vibra- vibranium suit for Black Panther and also Black Panther powers. Basically, uh, the super soldier of Wakanda, if you haven't seen that movie. Well, however, though. The Wakandan Barry 
Let's see. Oh, that's well, we don't know that. That's not introduced until Black Panther in the movie. Yes, but it's still a power. Well, we know Georgia. that because we've seen it. But I said introduced in this movie. That was my question. Georgia, that's a, it's a strawberry question. You guys, you guys nailed the two things he was he was getting after, right? Black no. Panther and Spider-Man? The two that were introduced, because Black Panther's powers are cool, but he's basically a super soldier. And Lady Disdain over there mentioned, huh, I wonder if... You would have... Yeah, your thought about... The doctor from Captain America First Avenger, did he visit and have a snippet of that flower? And that's why nobody could reproduce it, because he actually had the flower. But that's for another story. The two main superpowers that I thought that were introduced in here, because Black Panther has basically just super soldier powers, and vibranium, just in a different configuration that Captain America and Winter Soldier do. Mm -hmm. It's Giant Man, Ant-Man getting gigantic, Uh, and Spider-Man and his... uh, no, no. Wall crawling over the windows and things. So it was Ant Man, then it was Scott Lang, then it was <laughs> Cyclops. And I gotta say, the the facial expression of Scott Lang or Paul Rudd when he becomes big and he's like, oh, and his eyes are all big, and it was really funny. <laughs> that, was, that was the question I was looking for. The Black Panther is definitely a new character. I hope. I don't think he's a new superpower. <gasps> he's a refinement and a ongoing part of the Captain America super soldier Wait. level of superpower. T'Challa is the superpower? Eh? He basically me. just said that he was super. Well, he's a new guy in he's here and he character. obviously can run yes, his back. then you said he's not a new superpower. Right. Not for daddy, he isn't. But that, that's his opinion, and Willis... Well, we also have a lot of super strength, so, like, Hulk has super strength, no, right? But, yep. No, yeah. but he is... He is not a superpower. Uh, who wants to be next? Me, because um, I think both those two went. I can go, extensively. Uh, go, Bill, go! I didn't write down Ant-Man's thing, um... I didn't. Oh, no. I probably could have. Uh, I didn't even write down Spider Man, but I think I got. I think honestly, I got distracted. I was just like, oh, I'm writing everything <laughs> else down. I did just write down Black Panther, and I wrote down earlier before we get into the whole seeing what he's how he's involved. You know, when you see him, like the bomb goes off and he dives for his dad, and and you know he's like, oh, he's going to do things. I'm like, is he super yet? And then I kind of retract that because then as you see him carry on with the, the scenes, the battle scenes and the chases, I'm like, oh, he's super. Yeah. That guy went home and got, got his uh, his pedal thing on. So, uh, yeah. Well, I remember watching it in uh, the theater and watching it for the first time before Black Panther came out. Wondering, does the suit give him the power or does he have the power? We were right. wondering this. We had the thing. It was like, we came to the conclusion that he had the power, but the suit enhances it. But then if you see him and he fights Bucky, he fights Winter Soldier without his suit. And right. he's full on. You're and he's like, full oh. on, but he wasn't able to overcome him. So that's why we were saying he has the power, but the suit enhances him. Right. I would have to say that suit and his major protection so yeah. doesn't slow down as much when he's hit. So I think that's uh, why the suit mm-hmm. how it's, And it's bulletproof. Well, yeah, it's vibranium, shot. so... That's yeah, right. totally. And can we... Well, this will be, that'll be a battle scene. Never mind. Uh, proceed with whatever you're going to do next, uh, Mr. Driver Man. Huh? With this and vulnerabilities, I also wrote too many characters, so who wants to go next? Well, I think uh, Lady Disdain has something to say. I wrote down, which I've wrote, written down for weaknesses and vulnerabilities on prior ones, Bucky. Uh, it's proven right in the first battle scene with Rumlo or Crossbones. Um, Cap gets totally thrown off. As soon as uh, Rumlo says the word Bucky, he's totally distracted. He's riveted. He's like, what? What are you going to say? And meanwhile, Rumlo is getting an explosive ready. And almost kills Cap, and then it leads to that big explosion that you know Wanda or uh, Scarlet Witch tries to move around. So again, Bucky and and throughout, Bucky is a maybe not a weakness so much, but he's he's a priority point. I would say a prioritization for for Cap, and kind of drives his whole direction in this movie. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that assessment as far as weakness. Cap okay, next. Don't just stop staring at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> it is just. A little bit of Captain America Civil War screensaver stuff. I would echo that sentiment. Says Bucky, it stops him. We have weaknesses to all of them. That's mm-hmm. one thing I think uh, none of these superhuman people are really invulnerable. Loss being a pretty constant theme throughout this movie, but they're all vulnerable to loss. Tony 
um, is reliving his loss of his parents, but then he's also just lost Pepper. Like, as in broken up with her. Yeah, well, took a break. Took a break. They're on a break. Spider-Man Homecoming kind of... Yeah, but they were they were on a break, and and so he's lost her. Cat feels like he's lost Bucky. He also loses Peg, uh, Peggy Carter. Uh, so he, there's loss there that is also driving, you know. So both of them are being very influenced, I think, by what the loss they're feeling in the moment. And that, right, but the main characters too. Well, we have Captain America losing uh, Tony Stark. Those are the two main characters. That's the Civil War. The ancillary characters mm-hmm. have a little bit too because. Uh, Hawkeye doesn't lose anything. Right. He not gave up his family, but he chose duty over, you know, finishing his kitchen with his family. <laughs> right. <laughs> Going water skiing. Well, hold on. Scarlet Witch lost her brother, but that was a previous movie. Right. Vision didn't lose anything, but he's not human. He doesn't understand it. Uh, Zemo lost his family. That's the other thing, too. The main oh. antagonist suffered the same loss, but also T'Challa did, the Black Panther did, we see that that's the freshest loss, right? Is T'Chaka. So we see how it comes to fruition at the end of the movie with uh, Chadwick Boseman and his performance there. I think his best performance was at the very end. And he says to Zemo, Revenge has consumed you. It's no, I'm no longer going to let it consume me. Revenge. And we revenge, and, and it's consuming them because Cap wasn't going to lose his friend again, couldn't stand to lose his friend again. And Tony just lost his mind when he found out that's how his mom died. Hmm. So I think Furious Girl has a point. I think I, I stole it from her, though. Are you good? What, is that, does that cover weaknesses and stuff? Or? But seriously, Bucky has this part of his brain that mm. uh, science is him, and then he's like, oh, yeah, kill Ooh, everyone. There's that elephant in the room that the weak And then the what, 11 words or whatever it was. And one of them was Homecoming for Spider Man Homecoming. Okay, wait, wait. Homecoming, one, break car. Wait, yeah. Those are the last ones. So, what we need to do is come up with 11 words to say in a row that makes you instantly comply oh, okay. with, like, doing the dishes. Well, yeah. That's what we need. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, wait, I, can't I can't believe you're not even talking about that one. That's, like, a big, huge weakness. It's like a huge plot point and everything. Ah. Okay, Bob. Okay, Willis. I'm going to control you. Yeah, I'm not feeling very controlled right now. All right, where, where, are, we, where are we going on now, buddy? <laughs> okay. Okay, I'd say uh, villains. I only wrote Zemo. We know Hydra is a villain. Yeah, yeah. We, we know Hydra is a villain, but that's in almost every movie. So I just wrote Zemo. Which I think lends credence to the gravity of the Red Skull from the Captain America first adventure. Wait, credence? credence, meaning credibility. Credibility, yeah. Oh. How weight to it. Oh, we have this villain problem in the MCU. It's like, oh, it was solved with Killmonger. I'm like, wasn't really solved, it wasn't really a problem. Because we have, he actually says it, Hugo Weaving says it in the movie, I think the Red Skull was a great villain. Was as strong as the main character, because he had the same thing, the serum wasn't ready, but he also says, cut up one head, two more will rise. Mm. And it set up the MCU, and it set up Hydra in S.H.I.E.L.D. He was cut off, and Hydra went underground and became even more pervasive than it ever was. I thought it was interesting. I feel like they set up, and again, everybody, it seemed like in this movie, a lot of the main characters and even some of the just blips on the radar were dealing with loss. The woman that Stark runs into in the basement after he gives that presentation, yep, give that presentation at MIT, she's, she's lost something, and the extent she takes it is that she, you know, she confronts him, gives him her son's picture and says, I blame you for this, and moves. So then, you know, obviously that impacts him a ton. Then you've got Zemo, who totally takes it way farther. He's yeah. lost people, and he's like, I am going to wreck you guys, and, and goes to whatever lengths he has to do, killing all kinds of people to make sure that the Avengers suffer. And so I just thought those were two interesting paths where she set her... I mean, she's going to live with her grief and, and blame. And who knows, maybe eventually she's like, you know, no, I, I wanted to blame them, but, you know whatever, but, you know, Zemo just went the, the other way with that, and he was, I thought he was a, it, he kind of reminded me of a pitiable villain, because I always have found Bucky, right. Winter Soldier, to be like, oh my gosh, look what you're going through, well, look what Zemo went through, you know, you're like, yeah, dude. <laughs> about Black Panther, who, which is the last one to come out, we've seen, and we have a podcast about, and how Killmonger, he's enviable, and he has a backstory, and Zemo's not enviable, his backstory was Avengers Age of Ultron, right. somewhat, we keep hearing him 
listen to his family over mm-hmm. and over and over again. We see the extent he goes to and can understand. It's like, oh, well, I gotta get rid of these super people because they're just killing everybody out of revenge. Like, you can't understand that if you have a family. Right. So he's super... You totally honestly, empathize. Empathizing. Yeah, you don't want to... You're, you're not on his... I don't think you're ever on his side. I was never on Killmonger's side either, like, in any way. The cat is now sitting, sitting on, your notes. on my notes. <laughs> Why are your notes on the floor? Well, because I don't want to put them on the laptop. They're right there where I can see don't them. Do now, again, we, now we have things. Oh, no, you don't. Okay, don't. I, can I raise another villain? Okay. The Ross. United Nations. Ross. Yep. Oh, I was I was gonna see if we said it the same time. No, I didn't say Ross. <laughs> although he, said Ross. he kind of is the personification of the UN to yeah. me. Yeah. But um, because he's the Secretary of State, but he, uh, yeah, the United Nations, and I mean, I just had to. <laughs> as adults, you kids might not get this. You will, unfortunately, in the future. But whenever they're like, oh, the, U- the UN will tell you when to go places and when, I'm like, oh, okay, sure they will. <laughs> and it's right. just such a, it's such a terrible straw person to put up in charge of the strongest force on the planet. Yeah, we'll tell you when to go some places and do good things. No, so we have the Sokovia Accords in this, you know, kind of as the uh, plot point McGuffin thing that doesn't change, right? But... It was spearheaded by the Wakandan government because mm-hmm. there was a, a Wakandan uh, delegation that was killed in that building that exploded right. in the opening battle with crossbones. But then you come to find out that they're a super technologically advanced society that's all... It, it does... Watching this and then watching Black Panther directly or having watched that Black Panther, it leads a little bit more credence to the conflict that T'Challa had with T'Chaka mm-hmm. But I would say that Ross, being the personification of the UN, yeah. is a villain. And he's always been a villain in the whole floor, whatever, yeah, always yes. wants him. But he sees himself now, he's got this duty, and he sees that he can control him. He wants to be controlling. He wants to have them for him. Mm-hmm. And then when he's given this evidence, he's like, I'm not going to even believe you. He's so obtuse. And he's even more so than Tony, because when, when Black Widow and Romanoff was talking to Tony... And said, you can't put your ego aside for one minute. Ross is even more so, but he's also a smaller man, if you will. Yeah. Do you guys remember in um, Hulk, you, you, when you have that guy, Ross, you know, and he was like, oh, I'll just juice uh, up what's-his-face and make him, you know, powerful. I need a super soldier. And he was, and he wanted to capture Hulk and, and use him and stuff, weaponize him and stuff like this. And then it feels like, you know, do you remember in the movie today where he talked about in, in, in Civil War where he says, well, I had a heart attack and I gained perspective. Now it feels like he just kind of went the other way where he's like, no, we can't have any of that, any super people at all. We need to police them and not. And so it feels like he just like flipped the coin and went the total other way. But again, in a harmful way, but it's like, yes, but you're still not solving it. You know, you're yeah. still part of the problem here. So I agree. He's a villain. He's definitely a villain in my, in my opinion. And then Everett Ross was like, is he a villain or he's not a villain? Is he incompetent? What's going on? But I think this was just a small introduction for his role in Black yeah. Panther. So I'm not, I was thinking about putting him down, but those are the two villains that I had. Any other villains? The other super soldiers, my captain. Yeah. Good job. They could, oh, they were scary. The Hydra Elite Team, whatever it was called. Yeah. Uh, no, I, and then there's Dark Ages. Uh, they they were the best Hydra operatives but that, before they got serum. And we just, well, yeah, and like, they were the, before they and they got the serum, so they were Winter Soldiers. But I think uh, finally said it. She's Team Cap. Yeah, we do. Well, okay, are we all Team Cap? This is a great. This, you bring up a great question, Durda. So some people who watch this movie might be Team Stark, Team Iron. Yeah, oh. and they would be wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> so that's unpleasant. So stay we all. Uh, so yeah, if you're Team Cap, you're gonna say I didn't want to come out and say it. But if you're Team Cap, you're gonna say Team Cap, Black Panther, Iron Man, Vision, Spider Man, War Machine are the enemies. Mm-hmm. If you're Team Stark, you're gonna say Captain America, right? Ant Man, right? You know, Scarlet Witch, Hawkeye. They're the enemies. That's why it's called Civil War. I know. Is there really an enemy? So Georgia, double agent, totally. So who's on whose team? Georgia, you're on team. Kiki, Mary, please. Team I, Cap. Okay, uh, you are on team. Stark. She's totally team. I'm team Cap. Yeah, you are on. 
Oh, it's totally Team Cat. I'm totally Team Cat, too. Cat is probably, like, on the... His team paper. He's on the team. I'm on the notes. Yeah, team notes. Wait, 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 no. You know what he is? He's probably, like, so absent-minded. Like, I'm Team Palpatine. He's not. <laughs> team, I bet he's Team Black Panther, because Cat. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Unpause the Crew has decided we are all Team Cat for Civil War. I think all of a sudden, I just feel because the Chala, the Black Panther, is on the wrong team. It's a great movie because I think they all bring up some really, you know, some valid points about their why they are on the side they are. Rhodey is one. I'm just like, I get you, man, but I hear what you're saying, but I don't agree with you. Battle and fight scene. That doesn't break too many. <laughs> I did. Let me move the cat and find out what they are. <laughs> okay, so I had the beginning, which was in, uh, start with an L. Lagos. Lagos. La- Lagos. I mean, which is in Africa. Yeah. Near Wakanda. Apparently. Mm hmm. There was a content in it. Uh, and that was cool. Then, where are, we, where are they introduced Panther? Are they Chase, basically? Uh, that was in Bucharest. Bucharest. In the compound or where Buffy turned evil and stuff. Oh, yeah. That in was, uh, Berlin. That was Berlin. Yeah, Berlin. And, of course, the main one that you see in the trailer. Avengers vs. Avengers Team Captain America. If you're on Team Stark... Stop watching this podcast. <laughs> no, you can listen. Just be angry about it. It's okay. Maybe subscribe and like it. <laughs> or write in and tell us why we're wrong. It's totally okay with that. Maybe we'll read your letter. Yeah, maybe not. On the, on the air. Yeah, I probably, probably will. Probably. Who's the... Okay, cool. I don't remember any others. Oh, yeah, the last one. Where... Fierce Girl has one. Let's see it. Let's hear it. Okay. <laughs> Finally. It... It's all that Willis just said, and um, the one where the, all the other Winter Soldiers are fighting Bucky. Siberia. Oh, yeah. Uh, that the flashback where we see... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think uh, it's not too much of a fight scene. It's just so no, short. It's a fight scene. Yeah, it's a fight scene, yeah. but not too much of it. And uh, also in Siberia, there was Stark versus Captain and uh, Bucky. See, uh, Stark only, uh, stood kind of a chance, because, uh, Stark only stood kind of a chance, because he's so influenced, like, oh, blah, 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 blah. All the things you said, I think you, I didn't write down any additional ones. It was, I, I think it was poignant that there were so many battles in a movie called Civil War. It was very on point, so, yeah, a lot of, a lot of battles, that's all I had. Moving on to Dad. But I am going last, because... I am the director. Are we talking about... The most intense battle, which is when, right after Ross's visit, they're sitting around the conference table, and they talk about it afterwards, that's when they split. And it wasn't really a fighting battle, it was a verbal battle. It was the worst battle in the Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's the stage that's for the, the, for the whole movie there. But I put that as a major battle, because that was a battle of ideas, a battle of mm-hmm. ideology, of what you believe in what you're going to stand for. Yeah. The battle of sadness. It was sad. The ending was sad. Okay. You know, can I say, too, I felt it before we watched this, like, especially after seeing Age of Ultron, and then I felt it during, as we watched this. You never really get any kind of, Stark pretty much is putting Wanda, um, you know, Scarlet Witch on lockdown in his compound. And this is the same guy who, his machinery was responsible for her and her brother preparing for their life. They were scared to death of him. They hated him in the last movie. Her brother died after joining and stuff. I just feel like I would have liked to have seen something more between Wanda and Stark at some point to say, was there ever any real closure with that? Because I did. There were a couple of moments in here where he's like, oh, see this kid, we killed him in Sokovia. I'm like, yeah, and you're sitting across the room from someone from Sokovia that you almost, that you killed their parents. So, and you almost killed them. Yeah. I kind of thought that was a little like, I find your focus a little disturbing right now. <laughs> so I mean, it was only one like a missile yard or, yeah. away from uh, Quicksilver Space. It was a disarmed bomb. Exactly. It was about to blow up, but it was just Yeah, so I would have liked, and I know they ran out of time and I get it, but I even in the deleted scenes, I would have really liked there to have been some kind of interaction between where she's like, Hey, you know, you know, just something. 
because as seeing this whole movie in the context of that, where it's like this, this is the guy that you were hell bent on destroying a movie ago, and now we're like, oh, I'm living in his compound. He can totally tell me not to go anywhere. It's totally cool. All right, so moving on to Stanley Cameo, mm. I thought it was one of the few comedy things in here, but it was very low comedy, so I gave it a really, really sad kind of poorly drawn uh, on face. <laughs> so. Stanley, do you guys remember what the cameo was? Georgia, what was it? It was a delivery person delivering the package from Mr. Captain America to, 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 to Tony Stank. And, <laughs> Tony Stank. And Tony uh, said, I'm never, I'm never going to get table for two. Tony Stank. That was really right funny. Right next to the bathroom. Okay, so. Uh, we know what you rated it. Yeah, so the whole deck. I rated it pretty high. It was definitely a good version. And it's one of those ones where in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, we get another cameo from Mr. Stanley. And he mentions this one. I was even a FedEx delivery guy. Yeah. In that one. So it was one of those that he mentioned. I thought it was really good. And it led into some more humor. The humor that was lacking in this movie, there was a couple of times where during that intense verbal battle that I was talking about and Iron Man's like uh, are you agreeing with me? And Romanoff is like, oh, take it back now. I and then R- Renner's like oh, I knew I should have stretched. There was a couple of little things right there. Uh, Ant-Man not overshaking Captain America's hand. <laughs> but it was it was definitely much more low-key and much more an intense movie. Okay, so uh, before we add anything else, why are you always mistaking Natasha Romero for Scarlet Witch? Because it's late. I'm tired. Oh, fair enough. Don't go. I give it a 10 out of 10, also known as Happy Face Crying because I'm so laughing a lot. <laughs> out of ha- Happy Face Crying because I'm laughing. Okay. Well, okay, go. Mom. Um, I give it an 8 out of 10. It was good, solid good moment of funniness and yeah and it added levity to a good moment where Brody was talking about he was so serious you know he's gonna be par- paralyzed now and all that stuff and then it was like ha huh. so good you good know, moment I'm glad I rated it really poorly from time please what's next uh favorite scene can you go first okay I have no favorite scenes or lines or, any, or anything like that. Because no, I, did, I didn't find any good ones that I really liked. Oh, okay. Well, I think we're going to fill the gaps for you a little. I think we need to take a little bit better notes. We have Furious Girl here dying to prove you wrong. Uh, so okay, go. go. Yay! Okay, um, so my favorite character was Bucky. My <laughs> favorite uh, scenes are Ant Man and Pusher. So Iron Man, when he becomes Giant Man, and his eyes get all huge, he's like, oh, I was like, that was real. And then, and as he's doing that, I silently go, oh, 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 with my uh, hands on my stomach. Jolly Green Giant, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Jolly Green Giant. And I also like, um, during the actual Civil War between vendors happens, and Lang and Spider-Man are just really... Weird, like Spider Man just goes like he talks a lot, and um, Lang is just like, very large. What else? What are their favorite things? Nothing. Okay. Nothing else? That's fine. Who's next, dude? Uh, Dad. I liked the walls comment when Vision walks to the wall. Vision, we've talked about this. <laughs> But the door was open. I thought it'd be okay. <laughs> Walking through the walls. And that led to a great joke in Spider-Man Homecoming. Like, if you next to the Vision, he kind of doesn't respect the privacy. But, you know, it, it was very funny, and it led <laughs> to other jokes in other movies. So I was like, ah, that's pretty good. Every time Zemo was going mission report, December 16th, 1991. Mm-hmm. And it led up to the end. You're like, that's what happened on December 16th. And it kept going, and it was just like, ah. It was just, he just kept focus on it. It was so good. The funeral speech, that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Favorite scene with the funeral and Sharon Carter coming up and kind of solidifying Cap's view of things. The paprikash. Oh, yeah. Spirits lifted. But this is not that big. <laughs> Spiderling comment when Stark was um, meeting Peter Parker for ah, the first time. Oh, yeah. Spiderling, Spider Boy. Spider Boy. Spider- I mean, he's all like self conscious about <laughs> it. Those are one of my, some of my favorite scenes. Can you move your seat up? Another funny one. Oh, you know, that, that was... And the guy's like, no. And then at the, at the end of the battle, like, 
You couldn't have done that earlier? He's like, I hate you. Like, they're the... <laughs> they're so yeah, good. I think that would be different if they were in the same time era. Like, right. Bucky is like uh, 96 years old. I've got three more. So, Spider-Man catching Bucky's arm. Like, whoa! Now, like, like, catching a Nerf ball. And back, Bucky was like, what the heck? Yeah, this kid's like, this whole thing, oh, you got a metal arm, that's so cool. He's like, just like, oh, this is so cool. He's just like, cool. <laughs> Uh, well. At the end, very end scene between Cap and Bucky and Iron Man, and Iron Man is like, "Stay down." You never tell Cap to stay down. Nope. Oh, this is the third did. movie, Captain America three, basically, and every single one he's been told to stay down. He gets up, it's like, "I could do this all day." That's so right. you never tell Cap to stay down. No, nope. you never tell Cap to stay down because he has well, all the ropes. I, and she, see, here's the thing about it: after we uh, seen enough things for Captain America stay down and he wins every time you'll know that if he says uh, stay down that he's not going to stay down and he's not going to lose that's right okay so I'm going to read this from the trivia for okay. Captain America Civil War this is the last one of my favorite scenes and we all go Whoa, every time we see it at around one hour and nine minutes Chris Evans injured his arm muscles while filming the iconic shot of Captain America holding back a helicopter with his hands. Evans said, quote, that shot is a little bit of bicep porn. Zoom in on the biceps. That's what the script said. Kevin Feige didn't airbrush my biceps. That's me. It's not a utilitarian shot. It's a shot where you're trying to look heroic. That position of holding a helicopter with one hand and the ledge with the with another it's actually a very unnatural position to use to stop something, but we used it because I have to flex my bicep. <laughs> You're trying to make a scene look great. And I generally messed up my arm doing that shot because of the strain. I imagine. Unquote. Robert Downey Jr. joked that the filmmakers didn't mind that Evans hurt himself because of how great the shot turned out and that they have been using it to promote the film ever since. Anthony Russo revealed that the iconic shot almost did not happen. Because on the day of filming, there was a miscommunication with the costume department. Evans came in wearing a thick jacket. They immediately sent him back to change because they wouldn't have been able to film the shot of his muscles bulging as intended in the script. I'm going to go now. Are you done reading your trivia over there? Do you want to? I'm done. I said I was done. So I I wrote down cap and helicopter because, yes, anonymous ball caps. So we pointed this out in movies, but apparently, if you want to lay low and nobody recognize you, even if you're a super famous superhero, all you need is a, a solid color ball cap and some aviator glasses. Get a Winter Soldier. <laughs> Wanda had one on in the very first scene. She right. had a ball cap on. Cap and, and uh, Falcon have one on in a bar. And so does um, a car. The car. Can we come up with any other times in other movies? Because it happened in Captain America Winter Soldier when he was in the uh, museum watching uh, Bucky his... did it at the end of the same movie. Bucky yes. did it at the end again. It's pretty much it. Was it didn't Iron Man 3? Tony. Tony did it when he was at the hardware store. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there any other ones we could think of where they were doing it? Oh, uh, in Age of Ultron, was it a ball cap or was it a hoodie that Thor was wearing? Thor was hoodies. Yeah, so that's why he was recognized. He was wearing a ball cap. You actually said it when you were watching it. Like, if he was wearing a ball cap, he would have been totally in disguise. What about, um, I want it, maybe it's just a hoodie too, but does, let's almost go look back. Does Bruce in the, in the Incredible Hulk movie, the first one, does he wear a ball he cap? He totally has a hat when he's, uh, Edward Norton plays it. I he's wonder totally who hat. decided to make that a thing. Anyway, we actually discussed this might be something we do for Comic Con. I love the intro to Spider Man, uh, the whole scene with him where, you know, Tony's like, because you won the grant. And he just looks at him like, Pick up the pace, buddy. I'm totally, we're trying to tell a lie to your aunt right now. I love, and, and in that intro, I love where Peter, you know, the Tony asked Peter, why are you doing this? Why are you being your Spider-Man guy? And he says, uh, when you're able to do the things I can do and you let bad things happen, they happen because of you. Right. And so I loved how that tied back into ex- the so- Sokovia Accord and the whole, you know, Tony being so hit by his loss that he's like, oh, we can't do this anymore. But it's like, yes, but you're letting bad things happen now. Love the bros of the car <laughs> when they're <laughs> when uh, Sharon and Cap kiss That's finally, fine. and they're just like That's the kids' absolutely favorite scene. Uh, yeah, whatever. Oh, and Cap totally, I love it. He just kind of looks over. He's like, because he knew they were watching. He's like, hey, and they're just like, hey. Love again the battle scene, particularly in the Civil War scene at the airport. But love all the ones with Spidey and uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier or Bucky. I love. 
how they just are like, what? Who is this kid? And the last favorite scene or favorite line I had is where um, Tony is trying to basically he's ready to kill Bucky. And he's got him from behind. He's like, did you even remember them? And Bucky says, I remember all of them. And right. you're just like, oh. he remembers everybody that he killed, even though he had no power to stop it. So those are my favorite characters. Oh, and favorite character, I am going to go with Bucky. I think he's just, it's, he's an intriguing character. And I just like watching that evolve. So I never said favorite character. I would say cat. Yeah. Favorite- team cat, team cat, favorite character. My, cause- my favorite character is cat as well. Yeah. There you go. And nice. you and I had the same favorite character, Georgia, and the boys had the same favorite. Why character. is it your favorite character, Will? He's freaking Captain America. Well, good point. Do I need any more? Things? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna expound on that a little bit. He had a struggle. He wanted to do the right thing, and he was proposed with something that he absolutely felt was the wrong thing. I think the Sokovia Accord was the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. He was considering signing. He was considering compromising and needed focus, and then was gonna just do whatever he needed to do, regardless of the consequence. That's his character throughout the all thing. He put the wing down into the iceberg. He mm-hmm. was going to fight the Red Skull. He was fighting uh, Bucky in Winter Soldier until he finishes his thing. And he's like, I'll just stay here, man. We're, we're good. Yeah. You know, he's going to finish the job. Yep. So that's why I like that. All right. Wheel, what's next? But I would have to say... Uh... Mid flash end credit scene. Mm. First, that would be the mid credit scene. That was Bucky and Wakanda. Dang! Until they can heal my brain, it's better that I just stay on ice. And uh, then you see that they're doing that. Caps there with uh, T'Challa looking out over Wakanda. Yeah, and uh, you know what I find intriguing? What he trusted Bucky, but he recently tried to kill. But then, like, hmm, I certainly killed you. And Captain America, he trusted him with the secret of Wakanda. So, like, one of the biggest secrets in the nation. In the world. The world nation. Thing. But, yeah, the, uh, it goes to show you, and he says it, you know, both he and my father were victims of the same man. Mm-hmm. You know, if I can help one of them, then... Yeah, that was pretty cool. Shows that he's a good guy. That's that's what they're trying to show, really, is a good guy. And that the Wakandans were technologically advanced, like Stark's suit and everything could not detect... T'Challa's jet. Yeah. Totally still. That's true. Good point. You know? Remember that? Where T'Challa's following uh, Iron Man out of his chopper? Oh, it's something we haven't said. Uh, spoiler alert. In Black Panther, it's like, if everybody thinks they're a third world country, really poor and stuff, but guess what? They're the most highly advanced civilization in the world. And they have the most money in the world. Well, Pretty much. Well, vibranium does. Because it's, it's the most money. valuable metal, yeah. and they have a whole mountain. Yeah, yeah they've been and mining they are. it. Like, I'm recording from Flaw, and he's not wrong. They've been mining it for thousands of years. That's right. And they still haven't gotten it all. So, so the end of it, you know. Well, do you want to rank? Are, what, what, are, are we, we going to rate it or all? We rating the mid credit scene, the Bucky scene. Uh, so Bucky scene, I rated it nine out of ten. So the main is ten out of ten, and end is eight out of ten. It's okay, eight. Dad, what is your ten? I gave it a ten. Okay, I well, liked it a lot. Also gave it a ten. It did all the things I would want a mid credit scene to do, and it led right into the very, very end White Wolf scene in Black Panther. Yeah. So it ties. It's it's that thread that ties everything together. Okay. What about you? Uh, nine out of ten. Oh, you said it. And the second one wasn't second one again. And credit is Spider Man. Oh, yeah. He's got the thing on. It has the uh, Spider Man thing on the ceiling, and it says Spider Man will return. That's the end credit. They should have said Black Panther will return. Should have totally. Yeah, but they were trying to think. They were also saying, "Well, that's not all you're going to see is Spider Man." Then he got his own movie. Yeah. Well, that's a big deal because you yeah. know Sony still owns Spider Man. Lawyers got involved, and people too much money involved. Anyway. So what do we rate that one? Uh, I rated it a 7.5. Mm. I'd probably give it a 7. It was like a... It was just, yeah, I gave it a 6. Eh, yeah. What about you? Do you give it an 8 out of 10, I think? 8. 8.7. 8.7 out of 10. See, I'm glad Spider-Man was in this one, because it did cause a little more humor. Yeah, his were the funniest scenes, and uh, what was your rating for the last last one? Last, uh, I think I said 6 out of 10. 6, yeah. Okay. I think it would have been a lot better if it would have been just like him sitting there and Aunt May's not in it, and he just like fishes, and it just like goes and suddenly he's just like, whoa, cool, like that. Something like that, you know? Yeah. Not the whole, he had a big bruised eye, and it's like, who was it? It was Steve. You don't know him. You know, he's from Brooklyn. Uh, his, his friend was gigantic. Like, gigantic. Like, like a, 
huge bed, like a huge. No, no, it, it just they fell flat to me. It I just did, fell flat. I did find it interesting too. Do you guys remember when Tony's talking to to Peter Parker and he's like, "I can't go to Germany. I have homework." He's like, "I'm going to pretend you didn't say that." You know, he's kind of like encouraging him, saying, "No, you just come and do this." Whereas in the next movie, he's like, "No, stay home and do your homework and focus yeah. and graduate." So. As far as in Spider-Man Homecoming goes, we'll talk about. He says, "Oh, I took on. I want to make sure we talk about this during the Spider-Man thing. I took on Captain America." And Tony's like, "If he wanted to, he would have taken you out." And it's like he totally could tell that he was taking him out. I mean, Cap stops holding back at the end, fighting Tony, and Tony couldn't win in his suit against just a dude. Yeah. So. Oh. Well, it's not just a well, no, but just like, but he didn't have a special suit. Okay, I, I want to point out that Captain America. I think I heard this in this podcast. We don't think it's most strength. He's literally one of the most strongest. See, I think Wanda is the most strongest. Vision, most powerful, maybe. Yeah, Vision, Captain America is right there, huh? And the uh, Black Panther and Ant Man aren't Avengers yet. What about Hulk and Thor? Yeah, Hulk and Thor. They're like a. They're Ragnarok. Yeah, well, Hulk is in a class of his own, and Thor, uh-huh. I say uh, Thor is kind of, I say, I say Thor, since Ragnarok, is kind of with, okay. All right, so, so as we, as we're about to enter spring break, what, you go ahead and answer that next question before the reading. What's the next one, Willis? Half hour spring talk. Oh, that's what I was talking about. It's, it's 100 day spring talk. Okay. So, we're not getting more than an hour in a row of screen time any day off this week. Screen time will affect your eyes and it hurts you. It's it hurts true. Your development. But what okay, do you so plan? Uh, half hour spring. I'm planning my Minecraft, Overwatch, or Zelda. Maybe something else. But you? I'm planning on Minecraft Realms, Zelda, and maybe a little bit of Lego World. Oh, there you go. I've been there for a while. Nice. And then. Like <laughs> She's tired. All right. Well, what's what your you unit of measure? What you decide? Okay. Now, I'm ignoring what I wrote down. 6.5 out of 10 freaking missiles. I don't understand, but I, I know I read it too badly. Like, there, there are 200 million missiles in here. <laughs> 200 million point one more than the last Cap one. shoots a lot of missiles. A lot of missiles. Zemo of- shoots a lot of missiles. Uh, it would take 100 missiles. Crossbow shoots missiles. a lot of missiles. There are a lot of explosions. Let's just say that, yeah. Explosions, that's so that was missiles. an arrow missile from Hawkeye. Yeah, okay. It is a missile. So, okay, it's a freaking missile. How did you rate it? A 6.5? 6.5. Well, I more than that 8. 6.5. You gave it a 6.5 out of 10? I don't like it. Hey. It's not that good. All right. Well, now, well, now. Some of the fighting teams are Can good. you give me a why? Just a real small why. Well, to I rated it high. They ain't got no humor. Doesn't like it because it's not so fun. It's darker. I think that's legit. Kids won't go back to see it. Yeah, no, I agree with that. This this definitely this definitely varied more into the like adult action film versus like having some kid stuff. In True. It. And then we wonder if this is going to be the same tones, the same directors, same cast has half of the same cast for Infinity. Go to the eight point four out of ten. Uh, freaking missiles. <laughs> <laughs> 8.4. 8. 8. 4. Okay, Mom? Uh, I give it a 9 out of 10 freaking missiles. Dad? You a solid went, 8, leaning towards the 7.9, but 8. What? 7.99. Yeah, I'm gonna go with it. 7.99. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I don't like it as much as Winter Soldier. Mm. I don't like it as much as Ragnarok, the humor in Ragnarok. It gets a little long. Uh, well, just wait for Infinity War then. Right, and Infinity War is longer. Uh, hopefully, Infinity War is better and blows longer. your mind a little bit more. But that being said, I love this movie. I don't hate this movie, and I would watch it again. It's just I can't because I have things to do. Okay, before we dismiss you guys, can I ask you one question? One question. Out of the superheroes in this movie, which one do you think has the greatest chance of hurting? Thanos. Surprising him, overcoming his power, get, putting something out there that Thanos can't exactly fight. Well, we saw in the trailer that Captain America already surprised him, but right. by number two is Scarlet Witch, because she might be able to fly him. Yeah, and what's the maximum number? Because just pick one. one. You gotta oh, pick one. one. Scarlet Witch. Really? I, yeah, because she can just make him fly. She, if she can overpower the Infinity Stone, so, like, disable it, and, like, control the person who's using it, All right. and, and she could probably, like, 
I'm going to say Ant Man because I am wondering if some way they are able to get into the quantum realm and control that. If they can, they can take that. Yeah, if he gets, and that's why, now look at this. Let's talk about Infinity War real quick because we're going to talk about Infinity War for every podcast until it comes out because these last podcasts are all Infinity War. So they're talking about Quantum Realm. The movie directly after Infinity War for the Marvel series is... Ant-Man and the Wasp. Right. Ha. Huh? And he's still on run. That's the movie right after Infinity War. Oh, so uh, does that movie take place before Infinity War? Uh, or is he Infinity War, uh, the sequel, uh, Avengers 4? Because then they're talking about the Quantum Realm. He obviously goes into the Quantum Realm because Hope, Janet Van Dyne Hope's is mom in this back. movie. Yep. Played by Michelle Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. And uh, so, yeah, the Quantum Realm, that's a good one. But also, the opposite of that, when he becomes giant, man, when he becomes big, and just like, he's able to actually <laughs> go toe-to-toe with him in strength. Who do you think would have one, the one guy in here, or person, would have a chance? The Quantum Realm one is a really good one. Thank you. Like, gets into the Quantum Realm, and like, just goes into the Infinity Stone, and then like, implodes an Infinity Stone. Well, there's singularities, and he's like, if you're talking all okay, that... I take the point out. I think it is Scarlet Witch. I'm with the mm-hmm. sauce here. And, 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 and Furious Girl. Right. And Furious Girl going just like that whole thing where maybe she sees someone like vision is hurt and then the same thing happens like with her brother and mm. his Voltron and she just goes nuts on it and is able to like levitate him out of the world or whatever yeah. and that's how they end the movie or something oh, yeah. we don't know it's gonna be amazingly good I do love this movie just not as good as Winter Soldier in my opinion what are you gonna do? Scarlet Witch could probably control the Infinity Stones eventually if she trains you know that, but probably she is young that's the thing yeah. she's young not, yeah. So, and can we go for Minecraft? Yep. Follow Unpause on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, or visit us online at unpause.com.